Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. Volker Humbert. I'm Senior Director Medical of Cytosorbents Europe. And it's my pleasure to present to you in the next eight to 10 minutes, a brief introduction into cytosol therapy in cardiac surgery patients. I would like to start with the presentation of our product. The Cytosorbit Sorber is a cartridge which is filled with highly biocompatible, quite little porous polymer beads with numerous pores on the surface. And each bead can act like, like a tiny sponge to remove substances from the whole blood. And this removal is based on the process of adsorption. Importantly, the surface for adsorption is located in the inner of the beads. This surface is around 45,000 square meters in size. And to be removed, a substance has to be small enough to enter through the pores on the outer surface of each bead to reach the adsorption surface. That's why a size selective adsorption is <clears throat> given up to around 60 kilodalton of molecular weight. And additionally, the substance have to be rather hydrophobic in nature to develop the necessary adsorption interactions. But also a concentration dependent removal is given with cytosorb, which is also called a kind of autoregulation, which provides a high removal efficiency only in elevated concentrations. All these features are first of all contributing to the safety of the device. The size selectivity supports that there is no substantial removal of albumin or of correlation factors or immunoglobulins given with cytosorb. The concentration dependency supports the restoration of physiologic response and prevents complete removal of physiologic mediators. Due to the high biocompatibility, there is no activation of the complement system or the correlation system, and only a very low loss of platelets directly due to the adsorber. When we look at the substances which are eliminated by cytosorb, there are in the center, of course, the cytokines and substances like myoglobin, bilirubin, and antithrombotics, ticagrelor or rivaroxaban. But it was also observed that cytosorb is effectively removing various dams, damage-associated molecular patterns, as well as PAMPs, pathogen-associated molecular patterns, which can be important triggers of the inflammatory reaction. Here, the overall pathophysiology is illustrated. We know that an infection can lead to a dysregulated immune response, further developing into a vasopleutic shock state, and finally into a multi-organ dysfunction syndrome. Importantly, a very similar response can occur after non-infectious sterile triggers. Also here, a dysregulated inflammatory response can occur with the more or less identical clinical picture as we see it in septic shock. And cardiac surgery, especially with cardiopulmonary bypass, is a quite well-known trigger of such a cytokine storm. So the idea of using cytosol therapy is to specifically address this dysregulated immune response to support attenuation of hyperinflammation by removing various inflammatory mediators from the blood. In cardiac surgery, there are two approaches <clears throat> available in regard to hyperinflammation. Cytosorb can be used classically as a therapeutic approach in postoperative patients that have developed this dysregulated inflammatory response. However, in appropriate patients, it also makes sense to use cytosorb in a rather preventive manner, intraoperatively, to avoid the development of such a dysregulated inflammatory response postoperatively. So the idea of using cytosorb here might be reasonable in situations when it might get stormy. And the preventive approach, the intraoperative use of cytosorb should prevent this <clears throat> development of overshooting dysregulated inflammatory mediators postoperatively. From a technical perspective, cytosorb can easily be integrated into a cardiopulmonary bypass. The setup is very much comparable to a hemoconcentrator set, setup. The blood flow through cytosorb should be between 100 and 700 mils maximum. And normally, anticoagulation does not have to be specifically altered 
or cytosolpharity. In regard to the triggers for using cytosol intraoperatively, the current understanding is as follows. So either very complex procedures like aortic surgery, complex redo and combination procedures or transplantations can be providing an indication for cytosol therapy or pre-existing hyperinflammation as we would see it in shock or endocarditis. Also patient comorbidity can be uh, <clears throat> leading a certain, providing a certain ratio for using or for considering cytosol therapy intraoperatively. And last but not least, the risk of bleeding complications in t patients or Riveroxaban patients is another reasonable approach. This is not addressing hyperinflammation, but a certain risk for bleeding complications given in emergency cardiac surgery procedures. So the intraoperative approach has a kind of preventive therapeutic aspect and is mainly for increasing intraoperative stability and to prevent postoperative complications based on hyperinflammation. However, with cytosol therapy, there's also the idea of using it postoperatively with the target of shock reversal in a pure therapeutic approach. So here it is storming, no doubt, and the idea of using cytosol is to modulate hyperinflammation to lower dysregulated levels of inflammatory mediators and bring them down to a more physiologic level. From a technical perspective, various extracorporeal circuits are available, so integration can happen into ECMO or renal replacement circuits. However, cytosol therapy can also be run as pure hemoadsorption approach in hemoperfusion mode. Importantly, cytosol is an adjunctive therapy. So it's not meant to replace any of the other standard measures. It's meant to come on top of these if standard therapy is not good enough for proper patient stabilization. So if standard therapy based on guidelines fails to provide sufficient hemodynamic stabilization within the first six to 24 hours, cytosol should be considered as an adjunctive therapy. Fortunately, more and more experiences are made with cytosol therapy. So there's a nice development over the last years. The current number of treatments is meanwhile by more than 140,000. With this, more and more publications, also peer-reviewed publications are available. And also more and more clinical trials are listed on clinicaltrials.gov and providing further scientific experiences. So as a brief summary, the intraoperative initiation can be done with two goals. One goal is a reduction in the risk for systemic hyperinflammation in various complex procedures or when a certain pre-existing hyperinflammation is already present. The other goal is the reduction in the risk of bleeding complications in emergent or urgent cardiac surgery when those patients are treated with ticagrelor and rivaroxaban. Postoperatively, the idea of using cytosol is given when the hemodynamic instability is not rapidly stabilizing, it's <coughs> rather moving into a refractory vasoplegic septic shock state with no hemodynamic stabilization achieved under standard therapies. And here, the early start within the first six to 24 hours after start of benefit, standard therapy is recommended for the best results. With this, I'm at the end of my brief introduction. I hope you also enjoyed the other two lectures and thank you very much for your attention.